Last time we introduced the concept of the geostrophic wind, which was a balance of the pressure gradient force and the Coriolis force. And we learned that the geostrophic wind was a good approximation for the airflow above the boundary layer and outside of the tropics. Today, we're going to introduce the concept of friction and balanced flow. Uh, and the things that we know about friction is that friction is highest over rough terrain and it's impacted by the surface characteristics, uh, including the vegetation and buildings uh, and other obstructions. Uh, friction always acts to slow the air parcel and it's directed in the opposite direction of the velocity vector. And the layer of the atmosphere near the surface where friction is still significant um, is defined as the planetary boundary layer or the PBL. <clears throat> Balanced flow, which is the topic for today's discussion, uh, occurs when the pressure gradient force is balanced by a combination of the Coriolis force and friction. Um, and the balance flow is characterized by cross isobaric flow and uh, the fact that the balance flow is weaker than the geostrophic flow because of the addition of friction to the system. So here we have an example of the force balance diagram for the geostrophic wind. Uh, here we have high to low, uh, pressure gradient is pointing directly from high to low, the velocity vector is parallel to the isobars, and the Coriolis force is acting to the right of the motion, which means that this uh, picture is delineating a uh, situation in the northern hemisphere. And I want to contrast that with balance flow, which is shown over here in this diagram. So friction is acting to slow down the velocity vector. When the velocity vector is slowed down, then the Coriolis force is weaker. Uh, the Coriolis force still acts at a right angle to the velocity vector uh, and pressure gradient it remains unchanged. If you blow up that force diagram, uh, you can see that the pressure gradient force is balanced not by the Coriolis force, but by a combination of the Coriolis force and the frictional force. When you add those two vectors together, you have an equal and opposite force to the pressure gradient force. We mentioned over here that the balance flow results in cross-isobaric flow. We define the cross-isobaric flow angle um, as the deviation between the velocity vector and the uh, line that is parallel to the isobars. So in this case, the cross-isobaric flow angle is about 45 degrees. Um, if the velocity vector were pointing straight across, it would be a uh, cross-isobaric flow angle of 90 and the geostrophic wind, by definition, has a cross isobaric flow angle of zero. This cross isobaric flow angle is controlled by the surface characteristics. Um, it's less than 10 degrees over the oceans uh, near the surface, and over mountainous terrain, it can be greater than 50 degrees. The nice thing about the balanced flow is that it actually allows divergence and convergence to occur at the surface within the planetary boundary layer, which allows the high and the low pressure zones to uh, change uh, over time. Recall that in the pressure gradient force, uh, excuse me, in the gradient wind, uh, there was no cross isobaric flow, and therefore the highs and the lows had no way of actually strengthening or weakening that's no longer true uh, in the balanced flow. And this is the uh, force diagram that we typically observe for air parcels within the boundary layer. This still doesn't apply to the tropics uh, because the Coriolis force is too weak in the tropics, but outside of the tropics, the balanced flow is a better approximation for the winds inside the boundary layer than the geostrophic wind.